In question one, we are asked to integrate this expression in here, giving each term in its simplest form. So I will actually start by writing the integral in a form that allows integration to take place without any errors. So it's the integral of 8x cubed over 5 minus 2 over 3x to the minus 4 minus 1 dx. In integration, we increase the power by 1, divide by the new power, so it's going to be 8x to the 4 over 5 times 4 minus 2 over 3x to the minus 3 over minus uh, 3 minus x plus the constant of integration c and this simplifies to 2x to the power of 4 over 5 plus 2x to the minus uh, 3 over 9 minus x plus c. In question 2 we are asked to express this uh, function, this quadratic function in the form of a plus b brackets x plus c squared with a, b and c being integers. So we are asked to complete the square. So f of x is 11 minus 4x minus 2x squared. I will start by factoring out the negative 2. So it's going to be 11 minus 2 times x squared plus 2x. And now I complete the square for x squared plus 2x. It's x plus 1 all squared. Remember, it's always half the coefficient of x that goes here. And then minus 1 squared. So it's 11 minus 2 times x plus 1 squared minus 1. So it's 11 minus 2 times x plus 1 squared plus 2 which leads to 13 minus 2 times x plus 1 squared. That was an alternative approach, so let me use my blue pen here. Alternatively, I could say that I will use the fact that I have the form of the answer. So we need to write 11 minus 4x minus 2x squared in the form of a plus b brackets x plus c squared. I will expand the right hand side and compare coefficients. So it's going to be a plus b times x squared plus 2cx plus c squared. So it's a plus bx squared plus 2bcx plus bc squared. So if I compare the coefficient of x squared this with this, I can easily conclude that negative 2 is b. I will then compare the coefficient of x, so negative 4x is 2bcx, so negative 4 is 2bc. We have that b is negative 2, so we get that negative 4 is negative 4c, and therefore 1 is equal to c. And finally, I will look at the constant 11, it's a plus bc squared. So 11 is a plus bc squared, so it's a plus b, which was negative 2 c squared, so 11 is a minus 2, so I get that 13 is equal to a, leading again to the conclusion that f of x is 13 minus 2 times x plus 1 squared. In b, it says uh, to sketch the graph of the curve c, showing clearly the coordinates of the point where we cross the y-axis, and then write down the equation of the line of symmetry. So first of all, we're looking at the parabola, the quadratic. The leading coefficient is negative, so it's a sad face. So I will draw my pair of axes to start off with. So this is the y-axis, the x-axis. So let me collect the information I need. The shape is going to be a sad face, we said. The cut on the y-axis means that x is 0. And when x is 0 and I substitute, I get y to be 11. 
If I recall the form in which we have put f of x, we wrote f of x as 13 minus 2 times x plus 1 squared. This form is helping me determine the location of the turning point, of the maximum in this case. So we know that there is a maximum at minus 1, 13. Why is this so? Because f of x is 13 minus something which is always non-negative. So the maximum can go to is 13 and this will happen when x is negative 1. So I think we are now ready to draw the graph. It's going to be something like this. It's cutting the y-axis at 11. It has a maximum at minus 1, 13. The equation is y is 11 minus 4x minus 2x squared. And another piece of information coming out of the location of the maximum point is that we've got a line of symmetry going through the maximum point. So the vertical line x is negative 1 is the line of symmetry I was asked to find. So in C x is negative 1 is the line of symmetry. In question 3, we're being given f of x here in terms of square roots, brackets, and all of that, and we need to expand it to express it in the given form. So we start off by writing f of x is x plus root 2 all square plus 3x minus 5 root 8 all square. We expand to get x squared plus 2 root 2x plus 2 plus 9x squared minus 30 root 8x plus 25 times 8. The 5 root 8 squared is 5 squared, which is 25. And then root 8 squared is just 8. So... This simplifies to 10x squared plus 2 root 2x plus uh, 2. Now the 30 root 8x, I plan on writing this as 30 root 4 root 2x plus the 225 times 8. This will allow me to collect the like terms together. So this is 10x squared plus 2 root 2x plus 2 minus 60 root 2x plus 200. So collecting everything together gives me 10x squared minus 58 root 2x plus 202. The second part of the question is completely irrelevant as it's identified by Roman numerals ii. And we're being asked to solve this equation in y. So I will start by writing the equation itself. It's root 3 of 4y minus 3 root 3 is equal to 5y plus root 3. I will expand the left hand side to get 4 root 3y minus 3 times 3, it's the root 3 times root 3, is equal to 5y plus root 3. I will collect the y's on the left hand side, so 4 root 3y minus 5y is root 3 plus 9. And I will factor out the y on the left, so y brackets 4 root 3 minus 5 is root 3 plus 9. So it's obvious that the next step is to write y is root 3 plus 9 over 4 root 3 minus 5. Now, in order to get rid of the square roots in the denominator, I will multiply by 1 in an intelligent way. It's 4 root 3 plus 5 over 4 root 3 plus 5. It's always whatever is in the denominator with the sign in between changed. So we will now expand root 3 times 4 root 3 is 12 because it's 4 times 3. So that's 12 plus 5 root 3 
plus 36 root 3 plus 45 over and in the denominator it's essentially the difference of two squares 4 root 3 times 4 root 3 is 48 and minus 5 times 5 is 25 so collecting everything together 12 plus 45 is 57 over 13 plus uh, 41 root 3 over 13 I would like to point out now that the question was asking the for the answer in the form of p plus q root 3 where p and q are simplified fractions to be found so we actually had to split into the part without the root and then the irrational part the 41 root 3 over 13 in order to match the exact form of the required answer question four we are being given the graph here it's a parabola and a straight line so the straight line has equation x plus y is equal to six i think it's a good idea to uh, write down the equations here and for the parabola it's y is 6x minus 2x squared plus 1 the line l intersects the curve c at the points p and q are shown and we need to find using algebra the coordinates of p and the coordinates of q in other words we need to solve a system of simultaneous equations using the straight line and the quadratic equation so i will actually start with x plus y is equal to six i will make y the subject so y is six minus x so i will equate the y's six minus x is six x minus 2x squared plus 1. I will collect everything on the left hand side so 2x squared minus 7x plus 5 is 0 and this factorizes into 2x minus 5 brackets x minus 1. So we know that either 2x minus 5 is 0 or x minus 1 is 0 which means that x is 5 over 2 or x is 1. We still need to find the y values to complete the coordinate. So y is 6 minus x, so 5 over 2, which is 7 over 2, or y is 6 minus 1, which is 5, and therefore we get that the coordinates of q are 5 over 2, comma 7 over 2, and the coordinates of p are 1, 5. In part B, we are asked to use inequalities to define the region R, the shaded region here. We can see that it's a region bounded by the straight line, the x-axis, and the parabola. So we want to be below the straight line. We want to be above the parabola. We want to be above the x-axis. The x-axis has equation y is equal to 0. And we also need to impose an additional restriction that we are to the right of point Q. Q had the X coordinate 5 over 2 and Y coordinate 7 over 2. We want to be to the right of this. Otherwise, this region would also have to be shaded because this is also below the straight line. It's above the parabola and it's above the X axis. So we need an additional condition. So, we start by saying we need to be below the straight line, so x plus y less than or equal to 6. We want to be above the parabola, so y greater than or equal to 6x minus 2x squared plus 1. We want to be above the x-axis, so y greater than or equal to 0. And then to the right of point Q, so x greater than or equal to 5 over 2. In question five, we've got a plan of a semicircular garden. We know that the diameter is AOE and the radius is three meters. So I think it's a good idea to start annotating my diagram. This here is three meters and this is also three meters. And we are told that the angle BOA, so I will add some extra lines here. So BOA 
is 0 0.7 radians by symmetry angle DOE should also be 0 0.7 radians and it says for one mark show that BOD is 1.742 correct to three decimal places so angle B O D is simply pi minus 2 times 0 0.7 so this is 1.741592 dot 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 which rounds to 1.742 to four significant figures as required i'm using the fact that angles on a line add up to pi radians 180 degrees and then the flower bed R is shown shaded and we need to find the area in square meters to one decimal place. So this is the flower bed here. We can see that the flower bed is simply the sector OBD. Take away the triangle here, the triangle OBD. I will write here the angle we just found, 1.742. And we could remind ourselves that the area of a sector is given by a half r squared theta when theta is in radians and the area of a triangle is a half a b sine c make sure your calculators are in radian mode here so the region r will be a half times three squared times 1.7 for one dot 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 i'm using the full accuracy minus the area of the triangle which is a half three times three the two sides are, are three it's, they are radii sine of 1.741 dot 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 which gives an answer of 3.4 square meters and then for Three marks, we need to find the perimeter of the flower bed. They want the answer in meters to one decimal place. The perimeter is the length of the arc here plus the straight line part BD. This is a chord. I will use the cosine rule to find BD and I will use the formula for the length of the arc to find the length of arc BCD. So let's start with the cosine rule. I would say that BD squared is 3 squared plus 3 squared minus 2 times 3 times 3 cos of 1.741 dot dot dot. So we get that BD squared is 21.059. So I take the square root and I get that BD is 4.58905. The length of the arc, we said, is simply r theta, when theta is in radians. So the perimeter will be the chord 4.58905 plus the arc, which is the radius, which is 3, times the angle, which is 1.741. And this gives an answer of 9.8 meters to one decimal place. In question 6, the curve C has equation y is f of x. x is greater than 0. We are told that the derivative f dash of x can be written like that. The point P for 20 lies on C. We need to find the value of the gradient at P. So in other words, we need to find f dash of x. 4, which is 4 plus 3 squared over 4 root 4, which gives an answer of 49 over 8. This is the gradient of the tangent at the particular point P with coordinates 420. And then we need to find the equation of the tangent. I will be using y minus y1 is mx minus x1. We know that y1 is 20, m is 49 over 8, and x1 is 4. I will cross multiply 
to get 8y minus 160 is 49x minus 196 and I will collect everything on the left hand side to give me 8y minus 49x plus 36 is equal to 0 so I'm giving the correct answer in the correct form all on the left hand side and all coefficients being integers in B, I need to find f of x, simplifying my answer. So I will actually start with the expression I was given for f dash of x. It was x plus 3 squared over x root x. I will expand the top to give me x squared plus 6x plus 9. And the denominator can be written as x to the 3 over 2. This means I can write this on a 10 by 10 uh, case. So it's x squared over x to the 3 over 2 plus 6x over x to the 3 over 2 plus 9 over x to the 3 over 2, which simplifies to x to the 1 half plus 6x to the minus 1 half plus 9x to the minus 3 over 2. I can now proceed with integration to find f of x. So f of x is the integral of x to the half plus 6x to the minus a half plus 9x to the minus 3 over 2 with respect to x. So we increase the power by 1 and divide by the new power to give us x to the 3 over 2 over 3 over 2 plus 6x to the half over a half plus 9x to the minus a half over minus a half plus c. So we will simplify this. It's 2 thirds of x to the 3 over 2 plus 12x to the a half minus 18x to the minus a half plus c. Now it's time to use the fact that when x is for y is 20 so i will substitute to get 20 is 2 thirds of 4 to the 3 over 2 plus 12 times 4 to the half minus 18 times 4 to the minus a half plus c which leads to 20 is 61 over 3 plus c and solving for C gives me that uh, minus a third is C. So F of X is two thirds of X to the three over two plus 12 X to the half minus 18 X to the minus a half minus a third. In question seven, we're given a part of the curve with this equation here. Given that the curve with equation f, y is f of x minus p passes through the point uh, with coordinates 0, 50, we need to find the value of the constant p. Well, we've got y is f of x minus p and it passes through 0, 50. So that means that when I substitute x with uh, 0 and y with 50, I would be able to get uh, an equation for p. So I got 50 is f of 0 minus p. So 50 is 0 plus 4. I'm substituting x with 0 in the original expression for f of x now. Times 0 minus 2 times 0 minus 9 minus p. So I get that 50 is equal to 72 minus p. So p is 22. Now, given that the curve with equation y is f of x plus q passes through the origin, write down the possible values of the constant q. Well, I will actually start by determining the cuts here. There are three cuts. They are the three solutions to f of x is 0. And it's obvious that we have a cut at negative 4. We have a cut at 2 and at 9 over 2. Now, f of x plus q means that we deduct q from x. So, deduct q from 
x, so we go q to the left. So in order for a cut on the origin to appear, it means I either go 2 to the left, 9 over 2 to the left, or 4 to the right. So the 2 to the left is simply going to be q is 2, and the 9 over 2 to the left will give me q is 9 over 2. So 2, 9 over 2, or negative 4 for me to go 4 to the right. In C, we need to find f dash of x, so I'll have to expand the factorized form. So f of x was given to be x plus 4, x minus 2, 2x minus 9. I will expand the first two brackets, x squared minus 2x plus 4x minus 8 times 2x minus 9. I will collect like terms x squared plus 2x minus 8 times 2x minus 9. And then I will further expand to get 2x cubed minus 9x squared plus 4x squared minus 18x minus 16x plus 72. So this gives 2x cubed minus 5x squared minus 34x plus 72 and I can now factorize I get the power down deduct 1 from the power so this is giving me 6x squared minus 10x minus 34 and then in part D it says hence find the range of values of x for which the gradient is less than negative 18 so we know that the gradient is given by f dash of x. So in other words, we've been asked to solve f dash of x less than negative 18. So 6x squared minus 10x minus 34 is less than negative 18. I will collect everything on the left hand side to give me 6x squared minus 10x minus 16 is less than zero. So 3x squared minus 5x minus 8 is less than 0, which factorizes into 3x minus 8x plus 1 less than 0. We've got critical values at 8 over 3 and negative 1. A quick sketch will help me choose the correct region. We've got a cut at negative 1 and at 8 over 3. It's a smiley face. It goes plus, minus, plus and we want to be negative, we want to be between minus 1 and 8 over 3. So my final answer should be negative 1, less than x, less than 8 over 3. In question 8, we've got the line with the equation 2x minus 5, y plus 7 is 0, and we need to find the gradient of L1. To do that, we need to rearrange in the form of y equals mx plus c. So 2x minus 5y plus 7 is 0, which means that 2x plus 7 is 5y. I will divide everything by 5 to get 2 over 5x plus 7 over 5 is equal to y, and therefore the gradient is 2 over 5. In B, we are told that uh, there's a point A with coordinate 6, negative 2, and a second line L2 that passes through A and is perpendicular to L1. And we need to find the equation of L2 in the form Y cos mx plus C. I will actually start from the fact that L2 is perpendicular to L1. So the gradient of L2 is minus 5 over 2. Remember, we flip and we change the sign. And then I use Y minus Y1 is mx minus x1. So y minus negative 2 is negative 5 over 2 brackets x minus 6. So y plus 2 is minus 5 over 2 x plus 15, which leads to y is negative 5 over 2 x plus 13. In part C, we've got that the two lines intersect at point M, and we need to find the coordinates of the intersection point. So I will equate the two lines. The first one had equation y is 2 over 5x plus 7 over 5. 
The second one is y is minus 5 over 2x plus 13. So we get 2 over 5x plus 7 over 5 is equal to minus 5 over 2x plus 13. The LCM of 5 and 2 is 10. So this will be multiplied by 2, this by 2, this by 5, and this by 10, leading to 4x plus 14 is minus 25x plus 130. So 29x is 116. Dividing by 29, we get that x is 4. The y value will be minus 5 over 2 times 4 plus 13, which gives a result of 3. And therefore, the point M has coordinates 4 over 3. And then, given that the diagonals of the square A, B, C, D meet at M, find the coordinates of the point C. So, the diagonals meet at M means that M should be the midpoint of A, C. So, I will start by stating that M is the midpoint of A, C. We've got the coordinates of A and the coordinates of M. I will call the coordinates of C, X, Y. So, 6 plus X over 2 is equal to 4. And negative 2 plus Y over 2 is 3. So, 6 plus X is 8. So, X is 2. And minus 2 plus Y is 6. So, Y is 8. And therefore, C has coordinates 2, 8. So we have the coordinates of A. It was 6, negative 2. We had the coordinates of the midpoint M, 4, 3. And we're using the fact that the midpoint is x1 plus x2 over 2, y1 plus y2 over 2 to find the coordinates of C. In question 9, we are told that the K with equation Y is capital A cos of X minus 30 is drawn here. And P is a minimum point on the K with coordinates 30, comma, negative 3. And we are asked to write down the value of A. I could start by considering the graph of cos X. So the first turning point for cos x is at 0, 1. So first turning point of y is cos of x is at 0, 1. Now if we consider what we have, which is capital A cos of x minus 30, we know that the negative 30 here is a translation of 30 degrees to the right. And the capital A is a multiplication of the y by a. So this means that this here will become 30 and the 1 will become a. So if I compare with what I was given, the fact that p has coordinates 3, negative 3, it's easy to conclude that a is negative 3. And then the point q shown here is a maximum point, find the coordinates of Q. So Q is here. If we look at the equation once more, we can see that we are looking at a translation in the horizontal and a stretch along the vertical. Neither of these translations, uh, transformations affect the periodicity, the how often the uh, wave repeats itself. We know that cos of x repeats every 360 degrees. And this will be the case for this graph as well. So if we go to our uh, graph, after 360 degrees, I will have one complete wave. After 360 degrees, I will have another complete wave. And then for me to reach Q, I will have half, half a wave. So this here will be plus 180 degrees. So 360 plus 360 plus 180. So I will start from 
30, where a was 30 plus 360 plus 360 plus 180, which is essentially two and a half complete periods. This takes me to 930. The y value will simply be 3 because the minima are at negative 3 and the maxima are at 3. And therefore, point Q will have coordinates 930 degrees, comma, 3. In question 10, we are asked to sketch the graph of y is 1 over x squared minus 9. So I will actually start by identifying that this graph will have asymptotes at x is 0. The reason is that when we plug in uh, x is 0, we cannot get a, a value for y because we're dividing by 0. To find the horizontal asymptote, we consider the behavior of y as x tends to infinity. So as x grows larger and larger, 1 over something large squared will tend to 0, and therefore y will be negative 9. So this is the horizontal asymptote. So we can also consider the cuts on the x-axis. So if we've got a cut on the x-axis, we set y to be 0. And therefore, we need to solve 1 over x squared minus 9 is 0. So 1 over x squared is equal to 9, which means that 1 over 9 is x squared. And we get solutions of plus minus 1 over 3. So we've got cuts at 1 over 3, comma 0, and the minus 1 over 3, comma 0. This means we are ready to draw the, the graph here. So I'll draw the x and the y axis. And it's going to be a reciprocal graph that's cutting through the x axis at a third and minus a third. It has an asymptote at y is negative 9. This is the right-hand side part, and this is the left-hand side part. The graph is symmetric about the y-axis. So this is the y-axis, the x-axis. This is a third. This is minus a third. So this is the graph of y is 1 over x squared minus 9. And then the curve D has equation y is kx squared, where k is a constant. And given that C meets D at four distinct points, we need to find the range of possible values for K. Now, Y is KX squared will certainly pass through the origin, and it will either be a sad face or a smiley face parabola. I could draw a smiley face parabola here just to consider a couple of things. So, if it's a smiley face parabola, it will never be able to cut four times. It can only cut two times. From this, we conclude that k must be negative, and therefore I will get rid of this, and I will draw a graph that's a parabola, which is a sad face. It will probably be something like this. And we want to have four distinct cuts. So one, two, three, and four. So up to now, what we have is that uh, k, the coefficient of x squared, should be negative. And then we also need to consider other conditions on k. So I will equate the graph 1 over x squared minus 9 with kx squared. I will let w be x squared, so I'm introducing a new variable, w is equal to x squared. This leads to 1 over w minus 9 is kw. So I will multiply throughout by w to give me 1 minus 9, w is kw squared. Collect everything on the right hand side, 0 is kw squared plus 9, w minus 1. For this to yield two solutions, we need the discriminant to be positive, strictly positive. So this means that uh, b squared minus 4ac 
should be greater than zero. So 81 plus 4k is greater than zero. So 4k is greater than minus 81, which means that k is greater than minus 81 over four. So in order to conclude the full solution here, we need to combine together the restriction that k is negative and k is greater than minus 81 over four. So we can say that we need minus 81 over four to be less than k to be less than zero.